Hello everyone and welcome again to our very first module lesson number three which is talking about the design and deployment considerations. So once we talk about the basic design and consideration best practices we should always be involving in identifying design and deployment processes that conform uh, to organizational policies and that will help you in developing for finance and operation applications. It is important to ensure that your code is deployed to the correct environment to avoid any kind of issues in productions. So in this lesson we would be discussing about the same things. The very first thing is pretty much identifying the relevant business concepts down there. So there are always business considerations when you're planning your design and deployment. So when you talk about identifying those business concepts which are pretty much relevant for the implementation, you need to consider few important concepts that will affect the project more often. For example, uh, the potential architecture and the needs of the implementations. So some of those things be uh, the identifying the gaps that what is needed and what exists. So that pretty much talks about whenever we talk about that fit gap analysis, there could be some existing things down there which needs to be customized. There can be some new elements which needs to be added uh, uh, to, to meet that business needs down there. The size of the company is an important factor down there. The number of transactions is also really important uh, to, to effectively plan uh, the, the scaling of the apps and, and what size of the VMs should we plan, the tiers of our environment should be planning. The seasonality is important. What's my projected go live date? Accordingly, I should be mapping it to the LCS portal. How many number of vendors, customers, users we are making uh, have those readily available? So when that needs to be imported, just get them done into the system. Uh, what is my existing network requirements and architecture needs to be followed depending on the type of deployment we are planning? What industry standards we should be following and pretty much our technical competencies uh, available at your customers resources down there. So when you talk about some of the functional specifications which we would like to involve in here, they're not really about the business requirement. They're about what kind of functionality clients expecting and what the system provides. And uh, does it require any kind of customizations? And if yes, how frequently are we going to do that? Changing your business processes as indicated because usually and in most of the implementation scenarios, Software is the part which will always going to change for the business. Business is never going to change for the software down the line. So detailed specifications are a necessity for a good design or uh, could be a disaster if the details are not uh, confirmed and they are not implemented the way it should be. So when you talk about having your functional requirements, mapping it to the system, identifying the gaps over there, that's really an important procedure to have the fit gap analysis of your project app uh, project uh, which we are trying to implement. So gaps in the functionality between the old and the new system can be addressed with the functionality changes or any kind of business process change which may occur today or during the life cycle of the project. Uh, you should consider the efforts and the timelines accordingly when you talk about identifying those key gaps in there and then uh, identify those specific changes needed and sometimes categorize them as uh, and prioritize them about when they should be completed. So pretty much we can talk about these things in there. As far as being a developer, when my design pattern, my coding pattern and best practices are concerned, first thing first, I should always have my environmental approach or available over there. So as you can see on this project structure, I've got my uh, developer branching over there, my main branch over there, my production release over there. Sometimes want to do it on the UAT branching as well. So when, when you talk about the code branching strategies, well, you should at least go with the dev test and release and if possible, go with the UAT and staging as well. And each code branch relates to one or more environment, of course. And whenever you do it, whenever you, you do it on, on your dev, for example, you do that and test that particular code. Once that is successful, mark it as a release candidate and then promote it to the next available uh, uh, branch over there, whether it's your testing or UAT and then finally shifting it to production. 
So that's how your efficient CI CD pipelines should be built in here. When you talk about the code deployment, any kind of update or, or, or hotfix you need to do, any kind of up, uh, updates you want to apply to your environment, you can do it right from your LCS portal down there. To show you the same thing, let me take you to my portal in here. I'm at my lifecycle services. Let me just go in there. And let me go to any of my project listed up in here. And this time I would like to go to my cloud hosted environment. So let me click over there, moving to my cloud hosted environment. It will take me to the environment which I hosted over Azure for dev and test. Let me click over here. It will show me the brief details over here. I would like to take you to click on the full details. Let me just do that. And that will open this Azure hosted environment right over in this tab and we can apply various operations. One of the important one we were discussing is if you've got some changes, you would like to apply some updates, whether it's from Microsoft or whether it's part of your SDP or software deployable package. This is the place from where you do that. So let's see if I'm clicking on apply updates from the maintain area down there. You can see any kind of updates which are available to you. You can pull it from the shared assets library, make it available over there, select and hit apply. By default, that's gonna take four hours of downtime and then that could be increased depending on how big or small the update is. But by default, it's gonna be four hours and the system will apply all those updates. Currently, I'm already on a platform update 32, which is pretty much the latest one which I'm currently applying in here. So taking you back to the PowerPoint presentation, this was actually the case where you can move in to your LCS portal and right from here, you can start deploying your LCS updates associated with that. So that's the very first thing. Then we have got some framework features and this is really the thing we would be discussing in our upcoming modules in much more detail. Few of them which we understood, like I've got my task recorder tool, we had this demonstration in our very first module, how my task recording guides can play an important role, specifically when I'm talking about keying my end users or key stakeholders during the project lifecycle or after the go live. I can have my regression suite automation tool for performing a automated functional testing. We can pretty much do it from the R set over there. I do have my business process modelers which are available over the lifecycle services which plays an important role during the life cycle of the project, having your business process modeled in form of uh, web enabled documents down there. Your data management framework important for your uh, data import and export functionalities and then bringing up your master data and the transactional data if required. And, and at least to go for go live, all the open transactions and the closing balance is what we'll be importing down there. So this was our lesson number three, which was talking about how these options are available. And that was the very first module of MB500. I should now see you to the second module, which would further talk about in much more detail and more hands-on coming up over there. So thank you very much for being with me for this particular module, guys. I should see you in the module number two of MB500. Enjoy the MB500 learning. Uh, thank you very much. Bye-bye.